So on a whim, I picked up the manga version of Marie Kondo's uh, book, The Life-Changing Magic of Tidying Up. And as someone who's felt a bit overwhelmed by all the clutter that's kind of crept into my life over the years, uh, it's been a bit of an eye-opener. So Marie Kondo is this self-described tidying freak. Uh, she's become world famous basically as a small, charming Japanese lady who is leading a uh, cult of tidying and organization. And the Con Marie method of tidying up, as she calls it, is really based on a few basic ideas. Uh, number one, she suggests don't tidy by room, tidy by category. So what you do is you gather all the things that are of the same category, say it's books or clothes, gather them all up, put them in a big pile, and once you see the big pile, you will actually get a grasp of, uh, of just how much you have. And only then can you start the process of working out what you're going to keep and what you're going to give away or uh, discard or sell. So, um, the criteria for working out what you should actually keep is, according to Con Marie, is to uh, see whether or not the object sparks joy in you or brings you happiness. Um, and if it does, then that's great. You should keep it. You should treasure it. Um, and if it doesn't, then you should thank it for its service and kind of... Uh, discard it. So maybe that's not the most practical method for things like screwdrivers or documents, but it is a fairly good approach to working out what actually um, makes you happy when it comes to a big pile of headphones. So I have here my headphone collection that I've accumulated over uh, many years. And, uh, you know, I've tried to whittle this down especially in recent times. Uh, but when someone asks me about my headphone collection, the first thing they usually ask me is, how many headphones do you have? And usually I say 20 or 30, but the truth is I actually have no idea. And until I've gathered all of this stuff here uh, in, in this pile, it's, um, you know, it's kind of really shocking. So uh, what we're gonna do is, in this video, I'm gonna give you my real time joy measurements of all of these uh, headphones and I'm going to work out uh, what I'm going to keep and treasure and what I'm going to um, put in the discard box over there. So some of this stuff I'll just be throwing away, um, some of this stuff I will be uh, giving away uh, and some of this stuff I will be selling and if you want first dibs on any of the, the stuff that I'm selling or giving away then um, you can get first dibs, you can get priority by being a, a Patreon supporter of the channel. Uh, you get first priority, you pay a dollar a month, you also get access to our Discord server, um, and you keep the videos going. So that's kind of cool, and you can check out the link in the description of this video, patreon.com slash Lachlan Likes a Thing, um, if you wish to partake of this, uh, this endeavor. Anyway, so let's begin. Um, and I think the KonMari method is, is very Japanese in that it... it it's based on a lot of, uh, I think, Shinto ideas about uh, the soul or the, the animistic kind of life force that resides in every object because uh, Maria Kondo suggests when you want to work out whether something brings you joy or not, you should hold it to your chest and you should let the object basically speak to you. And uh, if, if you love it, if it brings you joy, that's great, you know keep it, um, let yourself be surrounded by things that make you happy. And uh, if you don't, if you aren't feeling it, then thank it for its service. You know, literally say thank you for whatever it is that it did for you uh, and discard it with, uh, with no further kind of sentimentality. Uh, and she kind of suggests calibrating your joy levels by starting with something that actually you know brings you joy and brings you happiness so you can benchmark everything against that. So we're gonna start with my Audio-Technica R70X because I know this makes me happy uh, and I know I'm gonna keep this. This is sort of my daily driver, uh, everyday headphone that I use at home. Maybe it's not 
uh, the, the technically the, the most advanced headphone in the world, it's not the most expensive headphone in the world, um, definitely, but it's comfortable. Um, I find it has a really natural, pleasing sound. Uh, I'm really happy with it. I'm always happy to use this. Uh, and I will be happy to have it continue having a place in my collection. So thank you. Uh, and I will keep you on the left. And the pile of things on the left that I'm going to keep. So next is Sennheiser Game 1, and I'm going to try and do this at a relatively fast pace uh, because otherwise this video will go on forever, but I hope that you appreciate this kind of deep dive. This is the Sennheiser Game 1 headset that I use for particularly Twitch streams, uh, and I was hoping to really get into Twitch streaming this year once the NBN rolled out on my street, uh, which was scheduled for February of next year. Turns out it's been delayed another nine months. So I'm still stuck with a two megabit upload connection. So Twitch streaming is not gonna be really fun. Uh, as far as this headset goes, it sounds all right, but maybe it's the white plastic. Maybe it's the, um, maybe it's the fairly unexciting sound, but I've never really felt this headphone. So I'm gonna put this in the discard box. Thank you very much for your uh, service so far in, in um, conveying my nasal weedy voice to the masses. Okay, so. There are stuff here in a lot of IEM pouches that I'm not too sure what it is. In this case, it is the Yamaha EPH 100. This one, pretty easy for me. Uh, I actually really like the sound of this earphone. It does um, make me happy. I like the um, lightweight nickel plating. I like the combination of those very distinct Japanese forward mids and the uh, very large bass note. I don't really listen to this earphone a lot, but it is discontinued and it is something that sort of makes me happy to think about listening. So I'll try and use that a bit more and I'm gonna keep it because uh, I think it does spark joy in moi. Okay, so next is this Audio-Technica ATH CK90 Pro in-ear monitor. Now I've actually intended to sell this for quite some time, but the reason why I never got around to selling it was because the Y splitter, um, the rubber on the Y splitter started to come apart and I didn't really want to sell it um, to someone with that issue. Uh, this, this earphone does have some residual nostalgia for me because I got this relatively early on uh, when the CK10 was quite popular and I was excited about this as a sort of successor. Uh, However, I never really use it. Um, it had a warm kind of clear sound, but the IMO2 was the, which basically has the same drivers as the CK90 Pro, uh, really took this, this earphone's place in my collection. So I'm gonna say thank you so much for your faithful service until your Y splitter broke. I'm going to, uh, I'm just gonna offer this to anyone who 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 wants it with the who's prepared to get it recabled? Um, the Xiaomi Piston Three, easy choice for me. Um, didn't like it because it offers no noise isolation and the and the shells are too big for my ears. Um, so I'm gonna say goodbye. Thank you for teaching me that um, a lot of people can say that something is really awesome um, and it's actually kind of impractical and bad. A huge section of this collection is actually just IEMs or things. This is a Sony sports earbud. I do not know what the model is. This was sort of interesting because it's designed to kind of fit around your ears. Uh, it has a nice cute little design like a kidney bean, um, but never really used it um, because I, I think if you wore it over an extended period of time, the kidney beam would start to hurt. But anyway, I'm gonna sort of see if anyone wants this. Uh, if not, I'll probably chuck it. It was quite cheap, I remember, when I got it. Uh, okay, so this is staring me in the face the whole time. This is the Sony EX1000. Right, magnesium alloy. And I look at this. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to be perfectly honest. I don't like the sound of this earphone. I've said it before. I don't know why it enjoys, su enjoys such a cult-like status. Um, 
because I think it sounds really nasal and piercing. It's really great with some tracks, but I never ever listen to it. In fact, I only keep it for collector's value. The thing is, beyond whether something brings me joy or not, I actually had to think about the opportunity cost of keeping it, right? Because for the money, I could also be doing something else with the money that maybe could bring me more joy than keeping this earphone. And to be perfectly honest, I feel like this would bring more joy to someone else rather than me. Um, yeah, because it, you know, I can say that I'm proud of keeping it, but I've just kept it in a drawer the whole time and I never use it. So um, thank you, EX1000, for, uh, for being a kind of crown jewel in my collection. So again, this was the updated model of that Sony sports earbud and this how some this this design was actually worse in terms of ear pain so um, thank you for teaching me that uh, sony is a company with infinite wisdom that can continue to iterate and improve on their designs uh e2000 final audio design this is actually quite a nice earphone i've enjoyed using this as a sort of uh uh, a, a kind of beta pair of earphones that I have in my car, sorry, in my bag. Um, quite happy with the sound signature. Sparks a little joy in me. I'll keep it. Good value. So this is a pair of Radius in the earphones. Quite some time ago, I actually modded these by removing the foam in the in the center, and then no, no, I didn't apparently. Ugh, okay. These have become actually sort of sticky. The rubber has started to degrade on them. Uh, I never use them. They were a very early thing in my collection. Uh, I'm gonna just, yeah, I'm gonna throw these out there. Thank you for for teaching me the value of um, how how wonderful a wooden earphone or wooden audio products can look. But um, yeah, okay, it's kind of literally disintegrating in my fingers. So gross. Uh, this is an RE two five two. Hi-Fi man that I the rubber shell at some point broke so I kind of reshelled it into this um, Radiance goop that I used to try and make my own pair of customs certainly the design does not inspire joy my own ineptitude um, and the sound came out really weird after I did this Frankenstein treatment so thank you um, RE252 for being a guinea pig for my experiments uh, and I'm gonna have to put you in the discard box Okay, what is this? Ah. Ah, okay, so this is... They have entangled each other in an epic uh, battle to the death, which is only appropriate because this is a pair of uh, ear pods and a pair of VE monks that was gifted to me. Um, okay, so... As far as the AirPods, uh, the earpods rather go, um, not a fan. Um, they do not fit in my ears. They do not seem to fit in anyone's ears, uh, in my family rather. So um, thank you for teaching me about the ergonomic flaws of my own ears. The VE Monks. So this was a gift. Um, or rather, I met up with someone at a headphone store and they actually just gave me these um, to have a listen to and I did plan on doing a review at some point they are decent sounding do they spark joy in me I gotta say they don't really um, so they will gift to me I'll gift them to someone else so thank you um, for teaching me that earbuds can sound pretty good uh, okay, so V Sonic VSD three S yes. I was pretty positive about these compared to the short SC two one fives, but I ever since that review I don't really use them, and I can't say they kind of inspire a great deal of joy in me. Um, kind of ambivalent about them, so I'm gonna put this 
thank you for uh, being really cool looking with, the, with your kind of black crystalline design. I'm going to remember to take those spin fits off, but I'm going to put it in the box for now. Oh, we're getting through these um, at a reasonable speed. I hope this is uh, not infuriating to watch. I may as well move on to this taco, the VSD 5S. Feel unlike the 3S, which I was ambivalent, I do not like the 5S because it was like, it was just a little aggressive. You know, you can watch my review. I, I didn't really ever like it. I don't know why I still have it. It might have been a reference unit uh, that I kept, um, but I will certainly sell these. Um, so into the box it goes. And thank you for um, teaching me that, uh, declaring that you're gonna try and match the EX1000 sound is not necessarily a good idea. So, uh, Audio Technica ATH E40s. Again, I like the sound of these, I really do. I was quite positive in my reviews uh, about the sound of these. They cause me ear pain and thus do not bring me any joy. Um, so, this is gonna go into the goodbye box. Thank you for uh, making me feel bittersweet about something that sounds good but hurts. Okay, Shaw SE 215. Does it bring me joy? Yes, it does actually, even though everyone hates this earphone. Uh, this is the earphone that I always take with me traveling because I can go to sleep with it. Uh, it's comfortable, wearing on plane flights. Um, it's been sturdy, it's been trusty. Um, so I'm happy to keep it. So, into the collection it goes. Now this is a pair of uh, Jabra Pulse wireless earbuds. I bought these to exercise with, uh, to do sprint training because they have an inbuilt heart monitor. They actually are kind of cool that way. Um, and the heart monitor was neat. But since then I did get an Apple Watch. So I use that for the heart rate monitor. I don't use these anymore. Um, but thank you for your uh, service on my sprints and I will find a new owner for you. Okay. Sennheiser CX-3. Kept these around as a sort of beta earphone. They sound all right, uh, but they certainly don't really bring me any joy. Um, they're all right, but I would rather have the E2000. So thank you for uh, the times we had. Uh, I certainly like you more than the momentum in here. So there was that. Hi-Fi Man RE400. Okay, so the... Uh, s I have to say every Hi-Fi Man product that I've ever owned, I think, has, has developed an issue somewhere down the line. And in this case, the RE400, the, um, the strain relief came has detached from the earpiece. So um, these don't bring me any particular joy. I don't really use them that much. Uh, anymore, although they have a nice natural sound. I'll find you a new owner, one who can live with this uh, cosmetic flaw, or rather, it's not just cosmetic because it does actually affect the durability of the earphone, but we'll see. Uh, another Xiaomi earphone still has poor isolation. I don't even remember what are these called. I think these are second generation versions of the pistons. Never really used them. Um, Gonna, gonna give these away. Okay, ugh. Yuck, there's this bag of Compli foams that I have, but they're yellow, I guess from the earwax. Um, I'm gonna keep those. Sony XBA-1. <laughs> I don't know why, I find these amusing. Uh, single balanced armature in the earphones. Um, but I never use them. I'm a villain. I'm not going to use them, so I should just gift them to someone who, who will get something more out of them. Uh, but thank you. You were an awesome earphone uh, for a good price. FXD 80s. Missing one of the ear tips. Do I have any spares? Does this earphone bring me joy? I have to say, 
Now, the FXD80 is sort of like the Yamaha EPH100 in that I haven't used it that much, but it is something that I always thought was really cool. And I do have some old e-tips for it, uh, which I will fit because I don't want to Oh, these are the large ear tips. Anyway, this is a waste of time. Uh, he says as he continues to rummage for ear tips. You know what? Um, as much as I kind of have an affection for this, I use this far less than I do the uh, far less than I do the Yamaha EPH one hundred. And I'm missing one of the ear tips, so I'm not really sure what to do about that. Uh, so I will, I will, I will move these on. I'll try and find the other ear tip for it. Uh, or fit spiral dots in them or something. Okay. So, Zero Audio Carbo Tenore. I like the sound. Always good value. But I'm not really feeling it. I think every object that has a carbon fiber finish for me is doomed is doomed to be discarded by me at some point, or in this case, I'm not going to discard it. I'll, I'll, I'll find a new owner for it. Uh, but there's something about a carbon fiber finish that I find deeply unappealing. And that's just my own shallowness coming through. But it's a good earphone. But now that I have the, the Final Audio E2000, I've never really felt the strong urge to keep this at home. I think it's better than the E2000, but I don't use it at home because I have other earphones that I would rather use at home. Um, so let's let's uh, let's find you a new owner. Thank you so much uh, for being a really good value earphone, basically. Brainwaves, beaters. Well, I didn't even remember I still had these, so clearly they don't bring me any joy. Uh, I will find a new owner for you. Is it Brainwave Beaters or Alphas or something? I don't know. They were fun. Fun while it lasted. Okay. Audio Technica ATH IMO2. I feel like I keep this almost more as a reference than as something that I enjoy. And now that I'm not doing formal audio reviews anymore, uh, I don't really... It's a really good sounding earphone, but it's not really in generating the kind of happiness in me that perhaps some of the other things in the collection have. So I am actually going to find you a new owner, as surprising as that may be. Now, when I say, you know, joy, I know that there are, and the reason why it's always helpful to have benchmark, the Sony XBA Z5 is actually something that brings me a great deal of joy. Because it sounds so crazy with that hyper treble and the weird mid signature and the huge bass. And also the comfort of the design of this earphone with the counterweights of the uh, ear hooks on the end. I really have fun listening to this earphone. And in a way, I actually feel like because I can use this portable and because I can use this at home, it's a sort of desert island earphone for me. Uh, if I only had one thing in my collection, even more than the R70X, I would just keep the Z5 because I can use it in all kinds of conditions. So moving on, we've got these uh, Fostex T50 RPs that were used for various modding experiments, which have now been largely abandoned. Uh, you know, the T50 RP is a bit of a cult headphone um, because of its modding status, but I feel like that moment has sort of passed and the uh, big modders on the scene have actually become quite uh, professional. There's not much more I can do with these. Um, so I'm gonna sort of, uh, you know, let someone else find a use for the parts. I actually have a brand new uh, 250RP, brand new in box. Also, that um, by the same token, I'm going to pop into this book. Thank you for, uh, for that fun uh, entertainment of trying to mod and tweak headphones. Um, 
So this is the Sony XBA C10. Uh, you know, there's something about the kind of color of this earphone and the the decent sound and, and that sort of thing that's always been entertaining for me. I mean, they're a single balanced armature sound. sound. They, they have all the flaws of that kind of design, but uh, there's something about them that seems so wholesomely practical. Uh, I, for me, that's enough to tip them over the edge, you know? I think I will keep these... Um, No, no, I shouldn't. No. no, if I, I must always calibrate against your joy levels. There is a joy level here, but it's not. You know, I'm gonna let you go with confidence. Thank you for uh, being a fun earphone to own for a bit. V Sonic GR07. Gotta say, if I did not keep the IMO2. There's no reason why I would keep the GR07. Um, because by the same token, keep you sort of around for reference. Don't use you all that much. Uh, still think you're really, really good. Um, but I feel like you'd be, you'd be better served with a new owner. So let's find that for you. Thank you so much for being such an awesome earphone. Uh, and I will hear from you later. No, I won't. What am I saying? I'm saying it's like the GR07 is going to come back to haunt me. Uh, MDR7550. This is still an earphone that I think actually uh, I, I always like this more than the EX1000. I like the kind of uh, origins of this earphone as a professional monitor so that it was uh, actually hand matched by Sony Music Japan. Um, maybe it's the weeb in me that is kind of telling me to keep these earphones. Um, but there's something about their, their really practical, lightweight design and the natural sound. I'm going to keep these. They do, they do still spark a bit of joy in me. Um, and I'm going to try and endeavor to use these more, especially in the kind of hot weather these days. Harvey B3 Pro Ones. <laughs> so I was talking to someone and they told me that every single one of these units actually had the channel and balance issue, um, which might have been something to do with their production design. Uh, certainly, they don't spark a great deal of joy in me beyond recounting that particular story. So um, now that that's done, um, thank you for teaching me more about um, chi fi production methods. Sony MDR 100 ABN. This is actually my only pair of noise cancelling e uh, headphones at the moment um, because I've sold or lost. I actually lost my 1000Xs. Uh, look, I actually don't use these day to day uh, anymore really the only time I can imagine using these is on a plane flight and it would be really nice to have a pair of noise cancelling headphones on a plane flight um, but these aren't the most super comfortable headphones anyway and in that sense uh, I would be more inclined to wear a pair of SE215s I guess uh, or, or find something else that was that that could do all of the things I wanted to do. Um, so I'm gonna find you a new home, actually. Um, I feel like you would be um, you would be better served in a new home. So some of this is actually literally just stuff I. It's it's literally just I don't I, I don't even talk about it. It's just like MDR V55. Should be your Philips extra base. This stuff I bought for like potentially just like a quick and easy review. I never got around to it. Um, actually, I think I did do the V55 review. Anyway, they're, they're not good. Okay, all right, sorry. I would get up and pick that up, but I do not have the capability of moving from the spot. 
So, this is the Taxstar Pro 80. Um, the second pair after the Geek Pulse destroyed my first pair. Uh, I am, I am, um, you know, I've always been pleased with having the Pro 80 because it was my first uh, headphone that was sponsored by uh, my Patreon subscribers. I bought it with that money. Um, so I've had that residual soft spot for it. But apart from that, I never use it. Um, I know it inspire a great deal of joy in me. So I'm gonna give it away. Um. Sony MDR MA900. You know what? These, I haven't used these in in a long time, but they still, you know, when I look at them, I want to use them more because they're just so comfortable. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to promote these to more of a, of a central spot in my collection where I can find them and use them. And um, I'm going to let these instill me with happiness. So I'm going to keep those. III TMA1. You know, I kept these, even though I don't like the sound, because I think the design is just so cool. And in case you haven't seen these, they have this kind of matte black design aesthetic that I think is so cool. But the foam ear pads always fell apart. I glued them together, and hopefully that will last for the next owner, because um, they don't really inspire a great deal of joy in me beyond having a cool design, and I don't use them, so. Off we go. Uh, ZX700, oh, 701 rather, IP. I've actually tried to sell, sell these for quite some time. Haven't been able to because I, I don't know why. I will um, endeavor once again to find you a new owner. Ooh, okay, the discard box is overflowing. Uh, K612 Pro, again, I've been trying to sell this. Put your hand up for it. Patreon.com slash Lachlan likes a thing if you're keen. Um, otherwise, I will try and, um, and... And these are the last two. Me Electronics In-Ear Sport Earphones. I bought these as sort of gifts to give someone. Uh, but, um, like, I bought a few of them so I could give them around as gifts. And in that spirit, I'm going to uh, continue that and, and give these to whoever puts their hand up for it. Okay, actually, there is one last... Uh, one last audio product that I've just realized that I did not collect. These are AirPods. And I'm going to tell you right now that in the past uh, month or two months, I have used this earphone 90% of the time compared to everything else here on my left. Uh, not because they sound great, but because they're convenient. And strangely enough, even though the earpods never fit me, the AirPods, maybe because they don't have a cable, they fit me just fine. They're convenient, they're super easy. Um, they don't isolate, but in, in some ways that's an advantage for me sometimes so that um, people stop shouting at me. Uh, yeah, they bring me huge amounts of joy. Actually, these are the crocs of earphones, I feel like, uh, because they, they're things that people hate and they look silly, um, but they're comfortable. So keeper all right so i think we are done and that was the life-changing magic of uh of tying my headphone collection i guess as a sort of analysis of what i've decided to keep there's no real pattern um to it really maybe maybe uh, maybe leaning more towards the japanese side of things we got uh We've got the Audio Technica, the Z5, the Sony, um, the Shaw, Final Audio, and the Sony. I feel like this is a little collection that um, would bring anyone happiness, and it's already a lot more uh, headphones than most people have. So uh, I am going to treasure these, and the rest I will bit add you to and to you if you want if you want something from this box 
I'm going to put up a big list. I'm going to link it uh, in the description of this video. Um, as always, Patreon followers will get first priority. Uh, but then I imagine that not this Sunday, but the next Sunday, I'm going to just open the doors to everyone. So you have until that Sunday, not the coming, not the Sunday that comes in a number of hours, um, but the next uh, Sunday, um, keep an eye out. Anyway, thanks for watching. I uh, hope you're not too shocked. Leave a comment because I'm curious what you think. And I'll see you later. Bye.